Good morning, Lansing Journal community. I'm Josh Bootsma, Managing Editor of the Lansing Journal. Our goal is to keep you informed and connected and to build community in the process. And today, we are keeping you informed about an ongoing story that our newspaper has been covering and that larger media has been covering, and that is the story of Thornton Township. And we are here today with a man who knows more than the average person about Thornton Township, <laughs> Thornton Township Trustee Chris Gonzalez. Thank you for joining right. us today. Thank you for having me. We're excited to talk to you, to learn about the township, but before we do that, can you just introduce yourself to sure. us? Tell us about you. Um, Chris Gonzalez, um, I'm Thornton Township Trustee. I've uh, been a trustee since uh, 21, if I remember correctly, just going by memory. Um, <laughs> so as a just so not super long, first term as a trustee. Yeah. Um, I was the assessor previous to that for two terms, not right before. There was about maybe, I don't know, 10 year gap or so yeah. um, when I wasn't on the board or anything. Um, so, yep. So you have lots of experience in Thornton Township and you've seen even from the assessor side, from the trustee side, from the cool. resident side, of course. Oh, yes. Yep. Many different angles. So mm -hmm. you are very familiar with Thornton Oh, definitely. Thornton Township. Yeah. I actually started at Thornton Township back in 1990. Hmm. Uh, my, I haven't worked there continuously, but um, I was a summer employee, um, probably, and then just ended up staying for about an eight year nine year stretch, um, you know, from that summer employee to a part-time employee okay. to a full-time employee. Um, then I went to work somewhere else for a while, um, probably about maybe somewhere around nine years also. And then I um, actually was asked to come back onto the board. That's when I came by, back on as the assessor. Hmm. Um, and then, like I said, there was a little gap back now as a trustee, but um, even when I wasn't working there or anything, I mean, I always made sure I volunteered. I was always involved. So there was yeah. always, um, so needless to say, I mean, I. I grew up my adult life in Thornton Township, so it's something that's definitely near and dear to my heart. Our past, uh, passed away supervisor, unfortunately, you know, Frank Zuccarelli, I always used to joke with him. I was actually there before he was. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because it was just for a couple of years, but I always yeah. used to tell him, I was here before you were. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and, uh, but then, yeah, definitely. There are a few people who can make that claim. <laughs> exactly, yes, yes. yes. So, all right, getting into things a little bit here. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a township meeting just on Tuesday, March 12th. Um, and part of those meetings, you as trustees are voting to approve bills for various funds, usually three funds, the general fund, general assistance, and the road and bridge fund. Um, Chris, you have consistently voted against approving bills for the general fund and the general assistance fund, and that's something that Supervisor Tiffany Henyard has, has critiqued you for in the public <laughs> eye. Um, can you set the record straight? Why is it that you consistently oh, vote against those approvals? Yeah, definitely. Um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the main one, just the lack of information. Um, as you said, you were, you were at the meeting, um, just even using that last one as an example. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there and, you know, they pass out that packet. That was the first time I had ever seen what was in that packet hmm. um, till I was sitting there. Um, Generally, traditionally, we would get the packet maybe at least a couple days beforehand. Yeah. You know, at one time, you know, some, it would maybe Friday afternoon. Sure. Um, and at one time, um, it was to the point where they were even they would even hand deliver them just to make sure there was no confusion. And as in, you know, you got this, you know, mm -hmm. this person delivered it. And of course, then more technology, so it was able to be emailed and things like that. But you know, we would get it maybe at the latest, sometimes Monday. Um, and it, you know, we used to complain about it. Um, or it, it was complained about sometimes here and there, just saying, hey, that's kind of late, you know, but, yeah. you, but it was enough time. But even still, we kind of always liked that Fridays, but um, I'm just going by memory here, but I think in the general fund, uh, there was like 311 line items. And then oh. I can't remember how many were in the general assistance, but sure. you can't really go through that, you know, line by line and know everything that's in there. Um, you know, over the course of whatever that is, maybe five minutes or so. Sure. Um, it, it just can't happen. And then even beyond that, when you do or when it's asked, um, okay, you know, well, maybe I have a question about this bill, whether it be through an email or something, you just don't get an answer, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So those are the reasons that I have been voting no, and I've been voting no for quite some time. And like yeah. you said, yeah, we have, I've been you know, said, hey, you're against seniors and you're against, it. and obviously you don't want the lights to be on. Obviously that's not the case. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just that you, you know, you can't, you just can't make a good decision. I mean, and that's basically really one of our main jobs is, you know, keeping tabs on the finances, knowing what's right. in there. Right. And like I said, you just can't, you know, so, I mean, even I was asked by, um, you know, one of the other uh, uh, 
TV channels and they said well you know so what's going on and I said well I mean the information just isn't given I mean it, it, it you can't vote and she said well why are the other trustees voting you know yes and I said well obviously hey you'd have to ask them I said but for right either one of two things is happening either they're getting the information and they're seeing it sure voting yes or they're not seeing it just like you know I am and they're still voting yes to me either one's not right because obviously I mean and once again it's just my opinion but I mean there's things that need to be questioned in there so to sure. me either one's not right but I guess that's something that you know they would have to be asked I think we've kind of implied it already but for those who haven't been to Thornton Township meetings or maybe haven't read as much coverage about this um, you tend to be for lack of a better term the odd man out sometimes <laughs> Uh, there's there's three other trustees, trustee board of four, supervisor Henry is also also votes on various motions and things. Um, your name has been excluded from township literature. Your name, as far as the Thornton Township website is concerned, you, you don't exist. <laughs> um, so it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but my interpretation is the the Henyard administration seems to view you as an opponent, and I'm curious what you. Why did that happen, and when did when did that start? Uh, well, first of all, the, the why. I mean, it's just basic the questioning. They just don't hmm. like that I'm asking questions. And I was, once again, you've been at the meetings. I don't think I've anything, ever asked anything that was out of bounds. As a matter of fact, I think I've went the other way and have tried to be hmm. super uh, respectful and, um, you know, just trying to keep a uh, certain decorum. To me, I guess it just comes down to that, that just the plain fact that I'm, I've am i questioned things. And um, I, I, other than that, I really don't know, you know if there's any other reason, but that's the main one okay. um, that I could think of. And I, that's a unique role that you find yourself in then as being usually the only person on the board who has any who has any questions or is willing to to make a critical remark or say hey I'm not sure that we should be doing this this way you end up being the only person mm -hmm. who's making those kind of comments which kind of puts you in a, in a tough position because it all falls on you yeah because of that I really can't um, I don't want to say get anything done but even when I question something like you said we you know if there's a certain line item that say hey mm -hmm. can we table this let's get some more information sure. and we could come back to it um, I, because you have to make a motion you have to have a second for things like that right. Unfortunately, I don't have a second. Um, so I've gotten a lot of feedback from residents just saying thank mm -hmm. you and you know please just keep going. Don't you know? Don't stop asking questions. Sure, um, so sure. you know that helps so much. So let's uh, let's bring it back in time. We're talking about mm -hmm. Tuesday's meeting. Let's bring it all the way back to the beginning of 2022. That is when former supervisor Frank Sucarelli passes away, and a a void of power exists now at the top of Thornton Township. Um, that results in a series of meetings um, among trustees, <coughs> excuse me, where you are tasked with appointing a new supervisor. And if that doesn't happen by a certain time, that's gonna go to a town hall where then uh, the public is going to be Correct. appointing the new supervisor. Um, so if I recall, some of those meetings were a little bit contentious among trustees as mm -hmm. far as, I remember you suggesting <clears throat> a number of names that were not seconded or not voted through. Mm, Some correct. other trustees were suggesting names that, that were not voted through. So it comes all the way down to 12 minutes before midnight <laughs> on the yes. legal deadline. This is, this is in March of 2022 now. And it was you who 12 minutes before midnight said, I nominate Tiffany Henyard. Mm -hmm. And that was the first name that was actually voted for by the rest mm -hmm. of the trustees. So then just a handful of minutes before midnight, Tiffany Henyard is sworn in as the supervisor of Thornton Township. Put us in Chris Gonzalez's <laughs> mind, 12 minutes before midnight. What was your thinking in nominating her after this long process? I mean, just as a whole, um, I just felt that um, I was hoping we could get somebody that was a little bit younger for the role. Um, I felt it was time that we you know, may possibly, and I mean, I wasn't like honed in on that, but you know, that, um, you know, a woman, you know, I just thought mm -hmm. that that would be somebody, you know, that was a little bit younger, a woman. Um, so that's kind of where I was. Um, I'd be honest, I really didn't know at that time a whole lot of the, you know, that there was already some controversy and things like that a little bit that was going in on in Dalton, is, is Dalton you know yeah. say sure. so I didn't really know about that and that was also something that I mean obviously there you know just on the surface there was a little bit experience there mm. you know she'd been a trustee you know mm -hmm. just became mayor um, 
kind of a town that you might have had as a base as far as just like you know, once again, coming from that there might be some experience and things like that there. Yeah. She went straight to Frank's office and, you know, oh. sat in the chair and, but, and, you know, but, and she just kept basically yelling, what are they going to think now? What are they going to say now? Speaking of the Dalton trustees, because oh. I guess, like I said, there was already a rift and I didn't know that. So I'm thinking in my, I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? And mm -hmm. then, so I went to Keith on the side and I said, what is she talking about? I said, is the board against her in Dalton? And he said, yeah. And I said, who? He's like, everybody. And he was like proud of it. And at that time, I mean, I already was like, what did I do? Mm -hmm. Like you said, the other part was going to a town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people have asked. And it, it wasn't the case that I didn't want the people to, um, you know, speak their voice. But a town hall meeting is very different than having, you know, a regular election. I think sure. that if it was something where we would have had a regular election, it would have been kind of a whole different mindset. For me, once again, I'm just you know, speaking for myself. I just saw that you know, the way a town hall meeting would be set up, that there would just be so much chaos. And hmm. um, I just unfortunately had kind of saw that there, you know, it would just possibly be like something that was going to be stuck in the courts and things like that for some time just because of the way the process goes. It's really kind of an older process. I see. Um, it, but like I said, if it was kind of like a normal general election, that would have, I, I, you know, I think that would have been, you know, much smoother and much better where you're having, you know, outside, you know, say like the county, you know, as they do the other elections running it and things like that. You know, it's basically an old fashioned, you know, um, Everybody for this person get on this side of the room and everyone. So I mean, into it and then what if you had eight people trying to you know? It, it, I yeah. just saw. So I mean, those were really the, the reasons that were in okay. my head. Yeah. A little over two years later now. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that decision now? Do you have any regret about that decision? I do definitely. Obviously, with uh, everything going on, um, just you know, the, the financial things and just a host of others, uh, you know, I mean, I definitely do, yeah. Um, and once again, it's something that a lot of people have asked me, um, you know, hey, like, just like you just said, hey, at this point in time, I mean, you know, how do you feel, you know, do you feel, um, it was, you know, like you said, it was a, reg a regret or a, it was a mistake, and um, yeah, I definitely do. And, um, you know, I've even, you know, gone to the point where I've told people, hey, you know, listen, I'm sorry. Yeah, was your relationship close when, when things first no, started? No, not really. No, okay. actually, in all honesty, no. Like I said, um, we had spoke a few times, um, but really, no. I mean, nothing that I would consider close by no means. Um, one of the items of, okay, fast forwarding now mm -hmm. again in time to current day, uh, one of the items of recent controversy has been the uh, referenda that are going to be on the ballot for the March 19 presidential primary election. Uh, our viewers will be doing that in just a couple of days, going to the polls. Mm -hmm. um, three referenda are on the ballot for Thornton Township. The one that is, is most significant and generating the most, uh, most headlines, shall we say, is regarding mental health. So a, a tax increase to fund mental health services at the township level. Um, local legislators have urged residents to vote against that. Some local, many local mayors have urged mm -hmm. residents to vote Correct. no on that. I'm curious what your understanding is of that referendum and if you have uh, any opinion. I, I know you can't speak on behalf of the township and tell Correct. people how to vote, <laughs> but if you have any opinions or concerns regarding that referendum. Sure. Um, well, as far as the referendum goes, this is the second time it's being tried. That's right. Um, you know, it, it failed the first time. Um, but I think, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the tax increase. and, and I'm a, I'm a person, I mean, obviously, I'm not for, you know, generally a tax increase. I mean, sometimes, let's face it, it's, it's, it might be necessary or something like that. Yeah. Um, but to the point, you know, exactly, um, the township actually had, um, in the past, already a mm. mental health um, program going mm. that was actually basically dismantled. Yeah. Um, there were, there were a lot of tricks, or not tricks, but just things that weren't working for a little while, you know, mainly because of COVID. I mean, obviously you just can't, you sure. know, it was, you just weren't able to do a lot of those <laughs> things um, for a little while. So, the, but then after coming out, um, it just wasn't really put back together, basically. So the township already had a mechanism for that. We were already doing it. Yeah. Um, we could start it back up as soon as possible. If there sure. really was, um, if it was just the point of saying, hey, 
you know, somebody saying, I feel this strongly about mental health, there's a need, then let's do it. I mean, yeah. it, the, the infrastructure's there, um, you know, so, I mean, yeah, just do it. So, I mean, that's, to me, that's the first point, just like I said, then if, why do we need a referendum <clears throat> initially if everything's basically there? You know, right. That's kind of the first thing. And there seems to be a record of, I remember it was one of the first board meetings where Supervisor Henyard had become a supervisor. One of the first um, firings mm -hmm. was someone in the counseling. Correct. Department. Exactly. Yes, definitely. So there's a track record there that exists of, of seemingly not making that a priority. Exactly. And now Correct. To, to say that it is a priority seems maybe disingenuous. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. No, definitely. And, um, and then like kind of the second point to that is I feel we've had some issues already with transparency, mm. with, with being open about the finances. Mm. So how could we realistically think about adding more to that? Yeah. You know, so, that, so that's kind of where I'm at. So um, in other words, even if you're on board with funding additional mental health services at yeah, the township Which level, is a serious thing, you know, obviously, right. and you know, yeah. You might not be 100% confident that the money raised for that is going to be going towards Correct. that purpose. Correct, yes, ex and exactly, yeah. Right. Especially last year when we were going through it, I said, okay, so, you know, so everything's out there. We got this referendum, mm -hmm. you know, but where's, where's, where's the detail saying, um, all we saw was an estimate of what was going to come in, but okay, where's the breakdown? Um, or at least once again, an estimate. Obviously, you don't know exact numbers, but um, you know, we estimate that you know, I mean, just once again as an example, eighty percent of every dollar we bring in is going to go directly to helping mm -hmm. people. That's what I want to see. Sure. And obviously, not only last year, but this year. You, sure. Nothing like that. You so know. things like a, like a hiring plan. Oh, exactly. You know, yep. We, we estimate, things. you know, we're yeah. going to at least start with this many employees. Sure. You know, we, sure. might, we obviously might need a director or whatever. Right. Um, we estimate that, you know, these are going to be, you know, our estimated what we think we might, be, you know, pay them or things like that. Once again, you don't, you never know exactly until you really start putting, but you could have an example. So, I mean, that's, sure. you know, you have to actually. How could you throw out saying, hey, we're going to bring in $3 million dollars and just, you know, don't worry about it. We'll fill in the blanks later. I mean, it just doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way or shouldn't, you know, or shouldn't. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. All right, so we mentioned that talking about the, the kind of referendum that everyone is more concerned about, but there are three total. The other Correct. two, uh, one is regarding a second food pantry mm -hmm. and the other is charging $2 for a township soup and salad bar. Uh, so there are three total referenda mm -hmm. and the Illinois Election Code in Section 28 says that only three referenda may be put on the ballot by one public body. In other words, Thornton Township is at the max right now for referenda and an election. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you feel there is a significance to there being those three, given that some of those other two, opening a second food pantry, charging $2 for the soup and salad bar, don't seem like the usual, doesn't meet the usual standard for going to the public for, yeah. to consult for an issue like that. So I'm wondering if you think there's a significance to those three. Um, no, I definitely do. Um, I mean, I just feel that it's it was intended to crowd the ballot and not allow anything else to be put on that maybe might have been, um, you know, something seen as negative towards the administration. I see. Um, cause, and, and in that meeting when it was being voted on, you know, I had asked the question. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure you were at that one, but I, I had asked the question. I said, okay, we're talking about another food pantry and a soup kitchen because um, the supervisor was saying how, you know, she's heard that there's such a need and, and things like that. And I said, well, the bottom line is if you feel there's a need and you would just finish saying, you know, that we, we have money, mm -hmm. then let's just do it. I mean, sure, that's the bottom line to me. Um, and really the same thing had happened the year before. It was, I don't remember off the top of my head as far as what they were, but there was a couple things that were on the ballot that just, like you said, they just, weren't normal Don't things. Don't rise to that like, level. Yeah, was, exactly, yeah. you put it perfectly. It leads us to think why there are three, mm -hmm. and so one possible explanation is, is crowding out any potential adverse. Mm -hmm. uh, Correct, yeah. yep. Right. And um, if I understood it correctly, you could only put it on something on once a year, hmm. as you know, as far as being a specific uh, sure. referendum question. It's about the people. If there's a need, then and we have the money. Once again, though, let's put it down. Let's say. Right, let's make know. the plan. Yeah. Let's see so, the plan. You know, right. even for the referendum. There's no plan. And you know, sure. as far as you know, those two questions. You know, Opening a second pantry would be a where, how logistical. Much is it, yep, how much yeah. is it going to cost? Right. Uh, things of that nature. Um, right. But there's, like I said, it's just it's just thrown out there and there's no backup. 
All right, uh, something else that you're talking about voting on the referendum questions. Um, the end of last year, the board also voted on a salary ordinance that has been a topic of, uh, a topic discussed in the news media, shall we say. Um, can you just explain your understanding of that ordinance and what you believe the intended effect of it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, not a lawyer, um, but my understanding of it is um, you can only change, so say even, Today, if there was, we were having a meeting, you could only change, you can't change salary, say, today. It's got to be for the next administration. Other, you know, it's just, um, so it was put out that, um, and I, I don't have all the numbers, but anyways, you know, so say, and I'll, so I'll just use examples, you know, so a new trustee gets elected, mm -hmm. that person will get paid from there forward $5,000 a year. Um, you know, the supervisor, I think, was like $25,000 a year and, and, you know, different numbers like that. Um, I mean, I, once again, I mean, I guess the question is um, why? Um, and for me, the obvious reason is um, you're just trying to deter people from running. To be clear, the, the, the ordinance is something like 25000 for a mm -hmm. new... Uh, supervisor, supervisor. Mm -hmm. but if the incumbent maintains the position, they get to keep the current or, salary, yeah. which is Tenure north of two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that's that's the real questionable part of it, right? Correct. That, yes. It, it, so it, it'd be one thing to say, period, uh, twenty five thousand for anyone after the next mm -hmm. election, but to say apart from the incumbent implies that there's maybe you know that discouraging people from running. Correct. Against yeah. Them. I mean. It, that one kind of hits on so many levels. I mean, I, I, if I, I, it was either that meeting that that was voted on, or it might have been the one before that was just kind of um, the supervisor who was, I guess, basically just trying to get some information about it. And uh, she was actually had complained about the high salary, hmm. and I said, "But that's your salary. I mean, if you if you feel it's like, you know too much, then why are you accepting it? Sure. Or even if you accept it." give half of it, you know, to charity or back. I mean, mm. you know, because that's you. You're getting that money now. And which, and once again, I'm not maybe necessarily complaining, but you are. So I just, and then to pass that ordinance, and like you said, to exclude herself, yeah. and to still get that money, it, it's just, it just, it makes no sense whatsoever. Another uh, note of controversy that we've seen in the media recently has been um, regarding uh, the Supervisors Charitable Foundation, the mm -hmm. Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation. Uh, the township in the past has supported and financially contributed to, in various ways, um, some cancer walks, at least mm -hmm. some of which have been affiliated with the, the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation. Uh, recently, the Illinois Attorney General has demanded uh, paperwork from the foundation, and kind of in light of that, in light of what's going on there, it seems that Supervisor Henyard has been trying to distance herself from the foundation uh, that, that bears her name, kind of saying that she, it, yeah, my name is on it, but I'm not, it wasn't involved in starting it or something like that. I seem to recall having been in some township meetings myself. Um, that's, that's a new angle for me. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, if, in your opinion, like, what's your recollection about what she has said about her involvement with the charitable, charitable foundation that bears her name? Um, I mean, yep, like you said, in, in the meetings, she said, you know, I and we, you know, when it comes to the charity. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, even ultimately, I mean, that just goes to, I mean, even if your name isn't on as the whatever you want to call it, uh, director. Or, sure. I mean, it's, it's still your name on the charity. Yeah. So, I mean, we could start there. Um, I mean, to say I have nothing to do with it. But then at the same time, I mean, every, oh, not every, but I, I mean, a lot of people, I'm sure you've seen the footage of them going down to Springfield. It's That's like, right. okay, you were there. So once again, to say, oh, hey, I've got nothing to do with it. And it's one thing to have, have a, a charitable foundation that is um, you know, not submitting the correct paperwork or whatever, but it's another, it, it's another issue to have that exist and also have a publicly funded, you know, a taxing body mm -hmm. be contributing correct. money to that foundation mm -hmm. and really have no sense of exactly where the money correct. is going. Correct, exactly, yes. Using. And that was one of the, going back, because that was quite a while ago with that, but that was one of that was probably, if I can remember correctly, kind of the instance. Yeah. 
mm. where I really started saying, I can't vote yes on things oh, okay. because that was one of those cases where it was, you know, here you go, minutes before the meeting. And then, you know, afterwards, I'm, you know, I'm going through it and I'm like, wait, $10,000, you know, mm. and, so, and that's really when it was like, wait a second, you have to, um, y you just can't, you know, obviously just vote yes on something um, just because or, yeah. you know, whatever. No, it, you, it's just you can't. It's a potentially sensitive question mm -hmm. here, Chris. Uh, recently, some concerning reports from large media, and I'm going to read this because mm -hmm. I scripted this out because it is sensitive. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Uh, some large you. media such as NBC5 and WGN have, have shed light on an alleged incident um, during Supervisor Henyard's trip to Las Vegas. That trip itself, as you know, came under scrutiny for some extravagant spending that took place on the taxpayer's dime, including on township taxpayer's dime. Uh, but now a sexual misconduct allegation has come to light with a formal complaint filed with the Illinois Department of Human Rights. The complaint is from a former assistant uh, to Mayor Henyard, and that assistant alleges that an unnamed Dalton trustee acted inappropriately toward her and that she woke up in the trustee's hotel room. She also claimed that she told Mayor Henyard about the incident and was told it would be handled. That, that employee also claims that after she told Mayor Henyard, she was then put on unpaid leave indefinitely. Obviously, it's still very early in this process, Correct. and I know nothing more about that. No charges have been filed, much less proven. But if these allegations were to be proven true, what do you feel the supervisor's response should be? And what, yeah, what, do, what does that say about, about the supervisor and her leadership? Correct. Um, and um, I, yeah, basically, I really just know kind of what you know yeah. um, as well about these uh, the allegations, and that's at this point, like you said, that's w what they are allegations. But right. um, like you said, I mean, have, as we go forward, and if they are where, like you said, charges are filed and things of that nature, um, I mean, it's just a whole, this. I mean, let's face it, we, I, you know, we have a lot of problems, you know, as you know, from my viewpoint at the township. But this is just something that's. I mean, just unacceptable. I mean, just it, it, it just truly is. I mean, you're, you know, you're talking about, and I mean, yes, you know, with people getting fired or things like that, um, say at the township. I mean, yeah, maybe you're pretend, you know, ruining somebody's life or their career. But I mean, this, I mean, like I said, to me, this is just something that's totally different. I mean, um, so it, it's just, yeah, like I guess it's just unacceptable. And I just, um, you know, I'd mentioned about um, it just makes it difficult. To, from my perspective, for that administration to go forward, mm -hmm. um, just for a variety of reasons, obviously just the wrongness of, um, you know, the allegations, um, but, you know, but also just the um, being able to fulfill the daily duties and things like that, yeah. um, at, you know, whether you know, at the township. All right, so we're going to set that aside. Now, we've discussed a variety of different things, uh, different concerns, different questions that you've had. Let's say a resident, I, I've spoken to a lot of Thornton Township residents who are very concerned. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that they ask me is, what can I do? Okay. And I think that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. I have some of my answers to that <laughs> question. I'm curious what you as a trustee have told residents or what you would recommend residents, sure. who they should talk to, what they should do, what can concerned people do? Um, I, well, first of all, I mean, it, I mean, I'd like to thank, you know, media outlets like yourself and obviously others um, just for shedding some light and, and giving those people somewhere to speak yeah. um, because that's really kind of what one, one of the problems is um, I mean you know it's like a people knowing kind of what's going on mm -hmm. um, so they could really try to find out for themselves if they you know need to or want to um, but I mean I think overall I mean I've encouraged uh, the citizens to come to the meetings mm -hmm. um, and, and even if they don't come to speak, just listen, come sit mm -hmm. down and, you know, and if they do want to ask questions of um, one of us afterwards, you would hope that they would get some answers or at least saying, hey, let me take down your information. I'll, you know, let me find out. Our voters are, are, are great. They're educated. They, you know, they, you know, as far as, you know, what's going on, they're involved. Um, so just like I said, if they have questions, come and ask them. If they have comments, come and give them. Um, you know, I mean, that's really, and then just obviously just kind of gather up information on your own and make your own decision. I, I've told people, listen, I said, hey, I'm sorry. I, you know, I feel that I made a mistake as far as mm -hmm. all, you know, from the beginning. Sure. I said, but guess what? This is, you know, this is America. And, you know, people may want to look at 
the township as running it like a dictator or something, you know. Um, but no, guess what? You have a, your voice will mm. come, you know. Mm. And I just, you know, so I mean, yeah, we, 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 you know, we'll have an opportunity. The people will have an opportunity to. That'll be the next biggest step, you know, for sure. for the people. In talking with many different Thornton Township residents, one of the sentiments that I have heard from some people, and I it was just reinforced this week by someone I met, is that not only do they feel that Thornton Township leadership is not doing right by the taxpayers, they believe that the township level of government is an unnecessary level of government. The woman I talked to this week said, used the phrase duplication of services. Mm -hmm. In other words, at the municipal level, the county level, at the state level, you have other services that are overlapping and therefore the township level is, is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, you, as you explained, have been in the township world for yep. a very long time, you're as good as anyone to ask. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel the township level is necessary, and if so, why? Um, I do. Um, obviously, I might be a little bit biased, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I definitely do. Um, there's some services, obviously, that are. I mean, you know, duplicate may not be the exact word, but I think you know, even going back, you know, almost when townships are even created. I mean, they were one of the first forms of government, yeah. um, but it was always, you know, bringing the service, certain services closer to the people, as close as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but that, so there are things, say, like general assistance, um, the assessor's office, um, you know, can somebody go maybe to the state or to, uh, you know, Cook County to get some of those services? I mean, yes, obviously they can. Um, but a lot of, I look at the perspectives of you know, and right now it may not be the case, um, unfortunately, but you know, from many years when I've been at the township, it was always that place where people said, you know, this is going on in my life, or you know, my dad needs help, or you know, my aunt needs help. And usually the first words out of the other, whoever they were talking to, their mouth would say, hey, go to the township. They may not be able to help you, but they're gonna send you you know, they're either going to help you or they're going to send you where you need to go to get help. Yeah. Um, so I think it's kind of a, almost like a coverall in a way. Um, you know, and, it, and, and even on top of that, it's, um, you know, we have seniors. I mean, I, you know, my dad, he, he, he can't get around very much. Mm. So it might be hard for him to go to downtown Chicago. Mm. But it, it's, it, it might, it's a little bit easier for him maybe to go to the township and get some services done. Maybe are some tweaks need to be made. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I'm an open person. I think we could look at stuff like that. But I mean, I still think it's viable. Um, you know, even, even when you talk to some of the villages, I mean, they're the, kind of the same way, um, you know, where, you know, I've heard so many times when I've gotten calls from even Lansing, you know, some of the village officials that say, hey, I've got this person, this, they need some help, hmm. you know, whether it be with their property taxes or whatever. Um, you know, can you help them? I'm, you, know, is, you know, if they need to make an appointment or whatever, you know. Is it okay if they contact you or things like that? Even, I mean, even now as a trustee that happens, you know, some of them know I was the assessor before or something like that. Or they say, hey, we got this uh, family where, you know, their house caught on fire or something like that. Um, they need just kind of some emergency help, um, you know, and they could get that from the township. The next election that we've talked about is in 2025. I'm yep. a township election yep. is in 2025, mm -hmm. next year. Um, you've been involved with the township for a long time. Do you see your name anywhere on the township ballot come uh, 2025? <laughs> um, I mean, right now, in all honesty, I really don't know. I haven't made any decisions, and that's 100% honest. Um, would I like to? Yes. Oh, definitely. Sure. Like I said, I mean, the township's like home to me. Um, you know, uh, I felt that I had some um, explaining to do, basically. And I mean, obviously, a forum like this yeah. helps with that. Um, sure. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's something that, you know, you think about, obviously, and it's like, hey, you know, will the people, you know, what light are they going to, you know, or how are they going to look at me? Um, so, like, that's why I said it, it, it's good to get, you know, to be open and, you know, like I said, so kind of going forward, you get an idea. And like I said earlier, um, there's been a lot of people, you know, contacting mm -hmm. me, whether it be through, like, you know, they might get my phone number for someone else or, you know, like say through a Facebook or something like that saying yeah. thank you. And, you yeah. know, if you need help for the next election, you know, let us know. And I mean, like I said, these are people I don't know even, you know, <laughs> never met or, or they might say, hey, I know, you know, Joe, whatever, you know, and he he said to contact you because mm -hmm. I had some questions or, and, you know, kind of the same thing. They'll say, oh, hey, you know, if you need help, let us know. So, I mean, that's obviously extremely encouraging. Um, the one thing, obviously, you know, the township's very big. It's huge. Um, yeah. 
So it's hard for, say, one person to cover. I mean, traditionally, yep, there's been people who ran as individuals. Um, but it, it, just looking at things realistically, um, yeah, it, it takes a lot of money, you know. You know and sure. So to get your name out there. Oh, and, definitely. Yeah, you know, absolutely. and especially at this day and age where um, it's not so much of the old fashioned, you know, knocking on people's doors. I mean, mailings are expensive, and yeah. you know, even to do like say things like Facebook blast and things like that. That's you know, it costs a lot of money. So it is hard for an individual to say, hey, I'm going to just run for whatever it, you know, X Y Z spot, and um, you know, it, it would. It's considerable. So those are the things you have to consider. Yeah. Um, you know, is you know, is it just viable to be able to get it done? And and I'm speaking kind of from my perspective. I'm not one to do something just to do it, just because I feel like I'm entitled or something. No, you look at something realistically. You know, do do I have support for the people? Do, you know, do I have the financial? Um, because even if I didn't run, um, I mean, as far as the township is concerned, I mean, I'm not going away. Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as either helping or you know helping someone else that wants to run or something like that. It's not yeah. like I'm just going to be like, okay. I'm, you know, taking my ball and going home, as they say, absolutely not. So, yeah. I mean, I will be involved in some way um, as long as, you know, um, somebody will, say, accept that sure. or vice versa. Or even if they didn't, if I felt something wasn't going on right, I'm going to be that person speaking to my three minutes at the meeting. Sure. You know, that's not going away. Sure. As a matter of fact, sometimes I think in my head, I think, you know, I'd probably be better off signing in as a, <laughs> as a commenter, as a you know. <laughs> hey, let me take off the trustee hat real quick and go over here and get my three minutes, yeah. you know, uninterrupted. Um, but anyways, yeah, so, you know, to, I really haven't made a decision, even if I didn't. I mean, for me, I still feel like I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. And I hope the people look at it, you know, all encompassing, right. you know, right. that um, I just didn't fold and go with things that I didn't feel comfortable with. Well, Chris, thank you for your service on the board. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for answering our questions. You've consistently been there after meetings for me to ask you questions, and I, I appreciate your, your honesty and your, your willingness to, to share your opinion and your experience as a trustee. Thank you, uh, the members of the public, for reading the Lansing Journal stories, for reading stories from WGN and Fox 32 and NBC. Thank you for staying informed and connected. If, if there's, there are many reasons that we can, we can pitch to you why staying informed and connected is important, and things happening in Thornton Township is certainly one of them. So please continue to stay informed. Uh, as, as Chris has said, hopefully we'll see you at a future Thornton Township board meeting. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, uh, the annual meeting would be a great time to come and then see what's going on at the township for yourself. Thank you for watching today. Chris, thank you for the right. time today. Thank we you. really, really appreciate it. Thank you, and we will see you next week. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.